we're going to be looking at the different types of numbers that we deal with today. So let's start back right at the beginning, which is where you started with your counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, all the way on. These numbers are called natural numbers. And then to those natural numbers, we can add on the zero. And then what we have is the set of whole numbers. So what you see is the natural numbers are contained inside the whole numbers. This means a number like 3, that's a natural number, but 3 is also a whole number, right? 0, however, is just a whole number. After that, we can go and put in all the negative numbers that we've learned about. Um, and the negative numbers are like minus 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. There then we have the integers. And so what you have now is you've got the natural numbers, which are contained inside the whole numbers, which are contained inside the integers. So if we go back to our number 3, it's got three different names, right? It is a natural number. But because it's a natural number, it's also a whole number. And because it's a whole number, it's also an integer. Negative 6, for example, though, is just an integer. Okay, as you obviously know, there are plenty of numbers that sit in between, right? That sit in between negative 8 and negative 7, or between 3 and 4. In fact, between any two integers, there are infinitely many numbers. Let's have a look to understand those. We need to look at two types of numbers, rational numbers and irrational numbers. We're going to start by looking at rational numbers. What are rational numbers? Rational numbers are any number that can be written in the form a over b. In other words, as a fraction. But it has to have that a is an integer and b is an integer. And b obviously can't be 0, right? b can't be 0 because we know pretty well division by 0 is undefined. So what's a rational number? It's a, anything that can be written as a fraction, a over b, where a is integer, b is integer, b isn't 0. So let's get some examples of that. For example, a half is a very good rational number because a is an integer. Right, this thing here, that's an integer, that's an integer. So you've got integer over integer, you've got a rational number. But of course you've got things like, I mean, well, you should know just as well, say 0, 0,25. That's a perfectly decent rational number. It's written as a decimal, but you know that you can take any decimal and rewrite it as a fraction. So there you go, it's a rational number. And... Let's think even 3 itself is a rational number, because if you take 3, right, you can just write it as 3 over 1 in that form of a rational number. So, rational numbers, there's infinitely many of them, and they're starting to fill in the gaps between 1 and 2, 2 and 3, negative 5 and negative 6, etc. But there are more. So, the last set of numbers that we have to look at are the irrational numbers. And like the rational numbers, they help us fill in all the gaps in between uh, the integers. But the difference with the rational, irrational numbers is the rational numbers we learnt are numbers that can be written as a fraction, where integer over integer. The irrational numbers are numbers that can't. They can't be written as a fraction. Now what kind of funny numbers can't be written as a fraction, integer over integer? Well these are things like the square root of 2 or pi. If we look at the decimal expansion of the square root of 2 or pi, what we see is, say for example, square root of 2 is 1, 4, 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 3 5, 6, 2, it goes on and on and on and it has no 
pattern in it. Similarly, the exp decimal expansion of pi, 3,14159265,4, also goes on and on and on and has no pattern in it. So, the core thing here is what you're seeing with the irrational numbers, if you have the decimal approximation or expansion of them, they go on and on, all right? So, in other words, they don't end. And they have no pattern that repeats. Now, the don't end, just want to tell you, because you might well see it, there is a very fancy word for that. And that fancy word is this one here, non-terminating. So non-terminating, to terminate means to end. So non-terminating means not ending. They don't end. So if you see that non-terminating, that word is just a big fancy word for saying the decimals go on and on and on, and it's go on and on and on without a passion. Rational numbers? In rational numbers, you can have decimals that go on and on and on. For example, if you look at 0, 0,333333, right, and it goes on and on with exactly that repeating, 0, 0,33, the threes, right, 3333333, that one, okay, it's a non-terminating decimal, right? It doesn't end, but it does have a pattern, right? It's the pattern is it's repeating threes, and you know that that is one-third. So it falls into the rational numbers. So if it's non-terminating, in other words, it doesn't end, but it does repeat, then it is a rational. To be irrational, the decimal must be non-terminating and not repeating. Okay, just before we end, I want to just show you... Um, Often mathematicians use symbols for the rational, irrational, integers, whole, and natural numbers. So the symbol that they use for irrational numbers is a Q with a sort of extra line in it. And for integers, it's a Z with an extra line in it. And for the natural numbers, it's an N with an extra line in it. And for the whole numbers... It's an N with an extra 9 in it and a little 0 in it, right? Which just tells you it's the natural numbers with 0 as well. Now, if you put together the rational numbers, all the rational numbers and all the irrational numbers, you get the real numbers. So these are all together the real numbers. So it's everything in here is the real numbers. And for the real numbers, it's an R with a little double line. So just in case you see those symbols. All right, but what I really want you to do now is look at this a list of numbers that I've got here on the right-hand side, and I want you to quickly pause the video and in your books just tell me what each of these is. Okay, so let's start and go through it. This, the first one here, negative 30,125, that is going to be a rational number, right? Uh, we don't call it an integer, even though it's negative, right? Because remember, the integers are the negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. They're not, they don't have any decimal part in them. So, negative 30,125 is... It's a rational number, and obviously any of these numbers are also real numbers. All right, square root of 36 over 64. Okay, that's being a little bit tricky because, of course, what you need to do, often when we see square root, we think irrational, but you need to check, can you actually take the square root? And you can in this case. It becomes 6 over 8, which means what you've got here is, in fact, a rational number. All right, pi, pi is one of those very famous irrational numbers. It has a decimal expansion that goes on and on without repeats, so it's irrational. Okay, what's 34%? It's a funny number, isn't it? But percent, remember, means 
fraction over 100. So it's 34 over 100. So very easily, very simply, what you have here is you have a rational number. And then 45,777 going on and on. All right, again, this one doesn't stop. It's a decimal that doesn't stop. But because it repeats the pattern of the sevens, we know that it is rational. Okay, and then let me just check that we've all got this straight. If I asked you negative six, where does that fit in? Hopefully you'd easily be able to tell me straight away that that is an integer. But you also know that because it's an integer, any integer is a rational number. So it is also a rational number, right? Why is it rational? Because you can write it as a fraction, right? And if it's a rational number, it's also a real number. So a number as simple as the number 2 belongs in a whole lot of sets, right? It is a natural number. It's also a whole number. It's also an integer. It's also a rational number. And it's also a real number. The only thing it isn't is it isn't irrational.